And we are live. Welcome, everybody. This is the third episode of the Event Success Insights podcast, live with me, Krissa Skodra, the world's first event success manager. In this episode, uh, we will be discussing with uh, a great guest that uh, came all the way from Estonia. And in general, in the Event Success uh, podcast, uh, we discuss the latest trends with influential thought leaders, professionals, academics in the event industry. This podcast is brought to you and powered by Ludi, the leading event success platform that enables you to create meaningful encounters and measure them with the unique experience value score, a North Star metric to measure the success of your events. Check out more at Ludi. Dot com. This uh, live podcast is multi-streamed uh, across Ludi's LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube Event Success platform channel. So uh, we welcome all your comments. So please keep them coming from wherever you're tuned in. As I said, today I have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Jonas Olson. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Thank you, Krista, for the nice invite to this uh, to feature on your podcast. Thank you, Jonas, for, for traveling from Estonia, right? You arrived uh, earlier yeah, today. Yeah, I live in Tallinn since um, long back, 1999. So I do come to Finland uh, a lot. But um, you're not from Estonia originally, right? No, right. I, I'm so, born and raised in Sweden. Yes. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about uh, your background uh, yeah. from being born in Sweden and how did you find up yourself and come up uh, to uh, Estonia and how did you find yourself in the event industry? Yes. Take us through you. that journey. Thank you, Chris. So, yeah, a uh, little bit about me. So, I'm born and raised in Sweden. Uh, I... Uh, I'm a father of three, so I have two sons, uh, adult sons, almost 19, 17, and a daughter. All right. Uh, Are they tuned in? Sorry? Are they tuned in already, uh, your one children? One is doing the, the defense service in oh. Dupiniemi, so I think he's there, and the other one is in school in uh, Otaniemi. All right. So they're very close. <laughs> they're in Finland both. So, uh, uh, and I wanted to, uh, my connection to Finland is that I have uh, married a superwoman. Uh, her name is Nora, and she's uh, my partner in mm -hmm. the business mm -hmm. and in life. And this is where the NJ Production, the, the company that Jonas uh, is a CEO of, is NJ Production. And I think NJ stands for Nora and Jonas, right? Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, absolutely correct. So, uh, yeah, and, and as I said, we, we live in Tallinn. And during the COVID times, we got the Bernice Mountain Dog, and we also have two ponies. Uh -huh. So after racing the sons, uh, I think I'm back racing uh, other babies at home. So, uh, yeah. But what babies you are creating with NJ Production? Tell us a little bit about the, the company and what kind of services you offer, what kind of babies you're raising through NJ Production with all your uh, team and, of course, your partner, Nora. Yes, no. Definitely, like the first baby was the company that we founded in 2001. So it came before we got our first son. So uh, we, we started up as a creative uh, agency uh, production. I heard, I listened to Yatko's episode as well from uh, Volti. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a similar, we were looking very much up to them as well, what they did. We, we, uh, we were doing collaboration with... Uh, Seikalu, which was a very strong uh, event company in Finland. Uh, so we produced uh, events in Baltics. Uh, and uh, another turning point, I would say, in the business, then after some time, uh, we, started to, we started to move out to the fairs internationally to uh, bring in clients. So we have all the time been very focused on international clients, international groups. And... Uh, if I, if I go further there along the road, I would say in uh, 2015 was another turning point uh, in the business uh, when we decided that uh, we are going to focus on global flagship events because this is really what we do the best. It's strategic events, it's uh, stakeholders, multi-stakeholders, it's very important events. And our team is so driven and uh, 
eager to deliver and uh, actually do more than we promise in mm -hmm. every production. So we we have we are like a big agency focusing on the absolutely most challenging cases, and mm -hmm. we have a global uh, uh, outlook. We glo we source globally. And uh, we also have teams that we attract globally. So working out of Tallinn, Estonia, a little tech company actually has most unicorns per capita today. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we saw that early. So with technology, we can reach out globally. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned about uh, checking out on the previous episode. So in the first episode, we featured uh, your colleague uh, Mikael Kastren from Tapaus event agency here in Finland and who were recently going Nordic as well and expanding. Then on the second episode, we had Jarko Kivikoski. And as the concept of the Event Success Insights podcast has it, uh, each guest uh, is answering to the previous guest question and gives a question for the coming up Yes. So uh, I would like to um, throw the question that Jarko uh, gave to you. First of all, he spoke very highly of you and all the good work you do at uh, NJ Production. So he asked you, how have you experienced the time of the pandemic? And has it been uh, changing the way you plan and, and produce events now and in the near uh, future? So how, what influence and impact COVID has had? So you touched upon that. So elaborate on that. And then when it comes to the actual planning and producing events for your clients, uh, what kind of lessons uh, you learned through the past uh, couple of years? Yes, uh, thank you, Jarko, for, uh, for that very excellent question to open up this topic. Um, as I said, uh, we at NJ, we are also very much looking up to you guys, what you do in Volti. Uh, I, I met Yuri many times, and, and uh, I think you're doing really great stuff. Uh, so uh, to your question, I, I would want to just walk you through what happened to us. So my last, uh, yes, wait, because... Man, this was this, this was transforming. This was nothing like we had experienced ever before. Mm -hmm. So, if you wanted to be challenged, like this is the ultimate challenge. And mm -hmm. uh, I I know you have had the same same experience. Uh, so I wanted to just start with my last trip uh, before COVID. Mm -hmm. I was uh, where was it? I was I was in Denmark. I was going to Sweden because I'm from south of Sweden, and I was attending my great or my grandmother's 100 years birthday oh so congratulations this was, this was the last party in mm. the 25th of february uh during this time i had to take uh some difficult meetings because mm -hmm. uh what developed uh uh you know as a epidemic uh kind of quickly grew and uh, we we were mobilizing for uh our the biggest event of the year it was like a it's a big industry. It's the biggest industry conference in drives industry. Uh, we were expecting 500 guests from all over the world, and it was about to take place in London in the end of March. So basically, uh, we had to make very difficult choices along the way. First, we we started to uh, uh, cancel the participants from Asia, uh, and. Uh, Thought that okay, we can still do it. We can uh, we can bring in the Europeans, the North Americans, uh, but it it kind of developed very quickly. So we also had some commitments in Finland for event production, and uh, me and my family we took the decision to actually move to Finland temporarily, just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes, to secure that we could uh, deliver on the assignments that we had. Uh, uh, still, I want to say this this. Uh, this time it was uh, for us uh, we we put all time into thinking how can we how can we overcome this because uh, i'm my background i'm an engineer mm -hmm. uh, i believe in science and i saw this is not going anywhere soon so uh, we just need to learn to adapt and, and uh, get out of this mess so of course my time was uh, going quite a lot into negotiation to act as a middleman between my clients and between the commitments. We had the big commitments in London. So uh, when I see now, I can see what I tried to do at that time was that finding a balanced uh, 
decision between partners because I understand both the client and I understand also all the suppliers. It's an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So you have to be reasonable and try to find uh, good solutions. So what we aimed for was to all the time uh, not cancel but postpone the events. And I'm happy we had so bold clients that actually wanted to stay on with us and uh, and face face this new challenge and actually not uh, cancel it but postpone. We during this time during 2020 we did cancel two events. One was about to happen in uh, in uh, 19th of March in Finland. It was a smaller event, so it was easy because it was only uh, related to, to personnel coming from Finland. Another event was uh, moved into uh, uh, into fully virtual, and it happened, but we didn't produce that one. Okay, so now I got some more more voice. Uh, you can hear me better. Uh, I, I hope so. We have somebody in, in the chat. Timo, thanks for your um, comments. That uh, there seems to be some uh, issue with with the sound. Uh, but um, others tell me that the sound is okay. Let me know in the comments, do you have issues uh, hearing us? Is, it, is our voices loud and clear? Or is it something that we need to, to look into? Let me know, please, in yes. the comments. So <clears throat> this particular event that was going to happen in London, um, we did postpone it two times uh, in the same year. Uh, it didn't happen uh as a physical event. So we we were moving fastly into transforming this event to a fully virtual event. So there started our uh, journey on finding out how we will solve this. If we could summarize, so I think if we move now to, to very like put them in, in a very short and sweet form for all the listeners out there, uh, what kind of lessons learn uh, could create and make an event uh, future proof with what we learned in the past two years. So what would be five concrete points for everybody, whether they're hiring NJ production or tapos or organizing their own event. So let's say somebody's yeah. organizing their own event, right? They don't have a big budget and they have a small unit in-house who want to do it. What would be the lessons that you would like to share that keep in mind this and this and this and this? Well, uh, I think on the top, at the top, uh, you would have to consider that uh, change and uncertainty is here. So uh, you need to find a way to adapt quickly. Uh, for us, it means that we need to have uh, we need to have very short lead times uh, to make. We had we had a physical event in Germany, all company, two hundred and fifty people joining. Uh, we started uh, working on that event in the end of September, and the event was happening in the end of November 2021. So it, it means that you need to be ready to move fast and be ready for, for plan B, uh, because always you never know uh, if you need to adjust something. If you have planned a physical event, you have the plan B that you also can turn it fully virtual if you would need or you can turn it hybrid by keeping certain coming in and the rest once you will allow in uh, online or virtually. Mm -hmm. So definitely change is it's here and the only yeah. constant is change in our lives. Uh, so um, if, um, as you said in the beginning and I got from your website, NJ Productions website, some quotes is that you believe in the power of live events. And uh, what makes live events powerful and we had a discussion before we go live on how is actually how do you understand live events and what is your definition for live events so what is live events in in your uh mind and how uh, live events can be powerful and have an impact yes so during this time i have been thinking what what is live events so of course i know that many people uh Put equal live is equal in person or physical meeting. Uh, me being more a tech person, uh, thinking that there has always been you go live here, for example, you live stream in LinkedIn, you go live in uh, Facebook and and other places. So for me, live is that when something happens, it, it there is a live moment. 
and it's maybe a unique and it's a it's a shared moment that is happening so this is not the video pre-recording or anything this is live uh, so to my mind live can be both in person and online happening uh, but of course uh, I, I, I used to, we use also the in-person and online to be very clear when we're talking about if you're signing up for an event, you should sign up for the in-person or for the online uh, access. Uh, the second question uh, that you talk about, what is a powerful experience? And uh, we were challenged to make this powerful experience in a fully virtual setting during the COVID times. and based on uh, the feedback that we got, mm -hmm. we succeeded with that. So uh, what, is, what is this powerful uh, experience that we can create? So we go very much into figuring out how we can help the customers to uh, create uh, a shared memory. It's a unique memory. You cannot get it or experience it anywhere else. So it's unique, it's made for you, you share it together. And uh, which means that you have, you have this moment in the time, a memory that you can reflect and go back to and, and uh, it will last forever. So this really builds community and a feeling of belonging. So I think this is what we are doing when we create these powerful experiences for our clients. Mm -hmm. What are the differences, Jonas, uh, regarding the the live in person or the live uh, virtual or hybrid events? Uh, what is the difference when there is uh, the five senses of the individuals experienced, whereas there is a mediated experience through a laptop screen or or other ways? So. Do you see that there are differences there in the impact and making uh, such experiences being memorable when they're experienced with the, the full senses, all the senses, or just a few of the senses? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, I think that, uh, of course, the most exclusive version of participating is to be in person. And I think also uh, many events are going in this direction that you kind of make an exclusivity. Uh, you maybe have to qualify to come to the in-person event because it is uh, giving you a lot more. You can use all your senses. In the virtual, uh, I think it's up to every, like if you think about the audience perspective, like build empathy to the audience and think what do they want? So I think it's very, very good to, uh, Think how is your audience? What can you do to uh, deliver on their expectations? And go out from the audience perspective. What do you want them to get? And the ones who choose to stay virtual for various reasons, uh, I think they should have the right to be that. But also, uh, the, the our customer who who puts up the event. It might be that they don't want to have a virtual part of the event and they make it only uh, in person and they have also the right to make this decision. So this is my take on it. So it is it is more challenging to do a virtual uh, powerful experience, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. And how do you measure those powerful experiences? How can we measure the in the participant's mind and soul have we succeeded or not to deliver that promise and that um, memorable experience? Well, of course, uh, we I'm invited here and we are using Lüti uh, as a tool to collect data. Uh, Lüti is one tool. Uh, we track if, if it's uh, in, uh, in a fully online mode, we can uh, track the engagement. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually built our own platform during the COVID times, mm -hmm. and uh, we chose to integrate Lüti for the pre and post event communication. But also during the event, when it takes place, we have uh, integrated uh, engagement tool where you mm -hmm. can chat, comment. But you can also we could also fully design it, and we also mm -hmm. integrated call to action. So mm -hmm. after you have done a product launch, for example, you have a call to action where you can actually get uh, an idea in real time who is actually interested to mm -hmm. go further in this product so this is something that you can do online it's uh, harder to do in person mm -hmm. there you need people to resources human resources yeah. yes 
And we also do, uh, uh, we also have reference groups uh, when we have in-person events uh, where we take a smaller group of people to interview them and uh, uh, listen. And we have uh, a set of questions that we go through to get a more uh, qualitative data from the event. Mm -hmm. Have your, uh, you said that you integrated Luti for the uh, pre and post uh, event communication. How about the, the experience value score, the EVS? Uh, you as an agency with your uh, clients, um, are you able to to use that as as a metric as well? Have you had cases where the uh, EVS was uh, used? Yes, uh, thank you, Chris. For for you you actually engaged with me in a session, a private session about this uh, engagement tool. And I think it's great, uh, and uh, I did I did challenge you a little bit because I see yes, I think it's it's very good. Uh, we have used uh, like a similar way capturing it in the in the after event survey uh, and uh, I uh, I'm sure that soon it will come that you can actually just add it in the end of the survey so it doesn't come as a separate communication because I'm uh, I'm a little bit concerned about sending too many messages to the audience so if you get them to uh, fill one feedback uh, and then maybe not the other but I, I get also the point that this isn't very easy. Uh, yes. And one click, mm. one click uh, mm. uh, feedback that you can do. So in this sense, it's great. Yeah. Uh, for for those listening and perhaps they're not so uh, familiar with what the experience value score is. So this is a, a unique metric, a North Star metric that Ludi has developed over the past uh, year and a half. And it's been used to, to capture the audiences of the event participants uh, by answering to a very simple question. Was the event I just attended worth my time? Was my time well spent or was it wasted? And there is a set of five emojis that can click on the emoji behind those, those of psychology and a mathematical formula. And then below they can give their open feedback. I think um, also being mindful of people's time, it, service are great. And of course, uh, you know, you want to capture more detailed information, but somehow perhaps, and I think, you are an, an, an engineer and I spoke with other engineers and, and Yargo was here before and he said, and I agree, when you when you try to measure too many things, perhaps you learn nothing or perhaps don't really take the time to, to fill in a lengthy form. Whereas the, the experience value score is sent automatically, immediately uh, at the end of the event and captures perhaps just enough that, that the gut feeling of, of your um, event attendees. So... Yes, we hear you. And I think this is very valid points that uh, any software company like Ludi is at the end of the day, we need to take into consideration regarding product development. So, um, and at the same time, when we measure a lot of things, perhaps we lose exactly this North Star guiding us through a changing environment. So the world is changing, but not the North Star is constant. So Lots of food for thought. We can, of course, argue uh, back and forth. So uh, you said about, uh, you said to me before we had a little chat uh, that you you read a lot about what's happening in the event industry. And obviously we, we get a lot of information. Uh, so what are, based on your uh, insights and readings and uh, your curious mind, what are some general trends where you see the, the future of the event industry going? And is it something in particular that you believe that it's perhaps now under the radar, but it's going to be a big thing? So what do you think? Uh, well, what I, what I see, <clears throat> of course, the uh, very important aspect we're, we're making events these days is the health and safety mm -hmm. of the participants. So this is this is something that uh, you need to have in place. Uh, you need you need to work on this, and and uh, because I th I would say this is the one major uh, thing that holds uh, customers back from uh, making events. That uh, uh, when it goes back to in person, that is it health and safety is it taken into account how, how we can live with it so uh, I see as well that data mm -hmm. as we have talked you have talked in the previous um, uh, episodes mm -hmm. that data we have we have got uh, possibility to track uh, the event journey 
uh, pre, post, and uh, actually as event agencies, we have uh, uh, become come, uh, part of the digital marketing as well. Mm. So uh, uh, data-driven insights are very important for the customers. And uh, I think uh, this is also something that you, ne- you need to have in place. Uh, it, of course, uh, as I said, you should make, uh, you should think and listen to the audience, be inclusive, try to uh, accommodate the needs, uh, the various needs of the audience. If they would want to, if they prefer to stay remote and uh, uh, you have the possibility to, to broadcast, then I think that's a great thing. But there I would think that you would need to actually uh, have a separate uh, production for the online uh, event. So this is how we we have been uh, approaching it. We have a physical event team and we have a virtual or online event team mm. because you need to think about the flow and uh, what parts uh, the online can take part of. For example, during long networking breaks and so on, you cannot just fill it up with something. So. Uh, you you have to really think how how you make it, and uh, we also see that events, the large events, are uh, maybe breaking out into smaller events and uh, also series of events. Mm-hmm. So uh, it might be uh, you you uh, create a series of events that are connected, like you have this podcast episodes here, mm-hmm. uh, which is great, and uh, so you you break it down into smaller. Pieces. Uh, one thing that is good with that as well is that the attention span and the uh, fight for uh, for attention or mm. the fight for participation for the participants has become more fierce because you have so many mm. things and options in today's world and uh, many habits has changed during the COVID times. So people have got used to new ways of living. Mm. So so we need to as well respond to that. Mm. Um, so so are you saying that that of course now this is the the uh, new way of living some things have became more familiar people are perhaps now in in a comfort zone being attending virtual events that we have successfully done it the past two years and um, but don't you feel also that there is a hunger for for live events at least for some part of the of the people and the event industry because there's um, there is a lot of restrictions, perhaps, despite the advances of technology with, with the virtual uh, events. Do you see that? Uh, what, what, what could be the flaws of um, or the, the disadvantages of a, of, a, of a virtual event or the limitations, rather, that could not really um, be in an equal level to, to a live encounter? Well, of course, the, the live uh, in-person experience is much better. Uh, yes, people are longing to get back, uh, and some have been lucky to get that possibility mm. already. Uh, and, and we see we see uh, how much more rewarding it is. Uh, it's uh, it can be it was very lonely for for many people to mm. be also isolated and online for a very long time. And uh, I think that my take on it is that. I definitely go to a physical in-person event if it makes sense to me. Mm. And uh, if it's worth your time. Yeah, if it's worth my time. And as you said, and, and I, I think we absolutely agree, everybody, that now we, people are going to be even more selective. So there, yes. the competition is fierce. Anybody can open their screen and their mic and make a virtual event, even with their Google Meet uh, capabilities, Right. And then, uh, you know, the, there is obviously uh, the, the, the hunger on, on the other hand to, to mm. go live. And so th- we have to balance, as you said, and learn from the audience. So it's good yeah. to have options. And uh, I like what you said, that you have to you have separate teams that you treat the virtual event as an entity of its own, that it's not just on the side and the ones who attend virtually are the unlucky ones to have a little bit less good experience 
So it's good to for those people for the various reasons, right? Uh, they choose to that way of participation. Mm -hmm. And for the others, then we offer um, different uh, ways. So that's great. Uh, so you mentioned about inc inclusivity. That's great. And I know that very close to, to your heart is sustainability. So would you like to touch upon, uh, now it's 1230. This is the Event Success Podcast uh live here from Helsinki with Jonas Ulsson, and we're discussing about event industry uh, insights and topics. So sustainability, Jonas, before we go, um, what do you think in, in those terms that I know this topic is, is close to, to your heart? Yes, no, absolutely. Sustainability is um, very much in the top of the agenda at our uh, gatherings as well. Mm -hmm. uh, How do you approach it? And and if you could give us concrete tips for everybody listening or ideas, how to make events sustainable in today's world? Yes, no, of course. Uh, sustainability, uh, I think uh, the biggest impact that we can do as an agency is to uh, support uh, the clients that have very sustainable business models and We have been fortunate uh, to have these clients who actually do a very positive impact on our planet and for the future of our planet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think uh, this is a discussion that uh, you need to have uh, with your customer uh, about the possibilities. And uh, I mean, you should you should meet up in person uh, if it makes sense, because the impact that these people that gather uh, can spread. Uh, to the whole organization is so important. And uh, what I see is that clients are uh, not looking only in the business perspective. They're, they're looking in the planet uh, perspective. So uh, it's not only the uh, people, uh, the planet and, uh, and the prosperity. So you're moving also into the partnerships. Mm -hmm. And uh, in partnerships is... Uh, multi-stakeholder partnerships where you can see uh, that even uh, like competitors are joining together just to make sure that together we find better solutions for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So th this is something that I see is happening in in in, uh, in the top level global flagship events, strategic events. Could you give some concrete examples? Of course, it based on the, as you mentioned, on the clients' uh, strategies and visions and missions and what uh, what what is close to their heart and how they want their brand to be represented. Uh, would you have any case in mind of any events that you organize that your client had specific wishes uh, regarding partnerships or regarding sustainability in in general inclusivity? So that how did you tackle from from your agency perspective the the matter and you, perhaps if you could share some some insights uh, from an well, actual case yeah i think i think uh, the actual uh, if if i think about uh, i can take one particular case uh, where uh, the client uh, we did something that was actually quite challenging we mm -hmm. did several events uh, for different target groups at the same time uh, and what was the benefit of this was that people who were contributors and the stakeholders in the event they were needed for all uh, parts of the different events uh, they were targeting different groups so let's say an internal event for the personnel where you kick off with uh, your personnel then you have a customer event Uh, you have uh, an awards event uh, and then followed by also press and media. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is uh, a good thinking how to avoid uh, people to travel many times to different events. It's also very economical, feasible. And uh, I, I think you make the most out of the event uh, mm -hmm. experience. Uh, And I also see that that uh, we are we are working more with uh, uh, electric uh, transportation if it's possible. Uh, this is something that is not easy to solve always, but yes, uh, if it's possible to provide electric buses, uh, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, thinking everything, we don't give uh, 
for example, plastic cups, you have drinking bottles, uh, you have uh, uh, all the materials that you avoid plastics everywhere. We use a lot of digital tools. Uh, we use app, uh, for example, custom built apps mm -hmm. for uh, sharing information. Uh, so you don't need to print uh, anything, and uh, and we keep we keep uh, all uh, all things uh, around the event at the minimum. And and if the event has a high level uh, agenda with the, which includes sustainability, I think this mm. gives a very good impact for yeah. the future of our world. Oh, great, absolutely. Uh, Jonas, uh, Jonas Olson is here with me from uh, the CEO of uh, NJ Production, an event agency based in Estonia, but with clientele that is all over the world. So check out uh, njproduction.com, right? That's correct. They have a great website with, you do actually have your blog, it's called Insights. So you have uh, articles under the, the Insights uh, tab as well. So check that out. Um, Jonas, is there anything else on top of your mind that you would absolutely like to share with our listeners, everybody interested in the event industry or taking part in it one way or another, everybody organizing events, watching this live now or watching the, um, the video replay later on? What is something that... Um, you would like to to mention that we didn't touch upon yet well um i, I listened to a good keynote um from a keynote speaker uh, stefan hutfors uh, he opened up and ended his uh, keynote with uh, a recommendation what was it the recommendation is to learn to enjoy change mm -hmm. and uh, i think when you learn to enjoy change uh, you you will feel much better and uh, you will you will do much better. Mm. So this is something that I think is uh, uh, guiding me as well. I'm I'm used to changes, but this has been extreme times. But mm. yes, enjoy it. I, I absolutely can relate to that. You know, um, change is, is a sensitive topic because um, I must say, um, I come from Greece, right? And Greek people have very high uncertainty avoidance, which means that they're not very happy with change. They like how things have always been from the Parthenon times. And it's very hard for some culture. It's a culture thing. And then, of course, it's uh, personal as well. So um, some people might be, of course, very petrified by change, right? They get immobilized. Uh, where others uh, might see it uh, as an opportunity, as a way to evolve. I came to believe now and to, to despite my, my Greek high uncertainty uh, avoidance background, uh, that I, I think over the past years and as I grow as a person, I think uh, we are moving to a more transformative um, uh, society and, and business as well. So I think here lies now the, the concept of, of how companies, how communities, how nations, how individuals can really take change as a constant, as a given fact, and then make the best out of it and see it as an opportunity to evolve. So I'm glad that you mentioned Stephens uh, and your uh, approach. So we are likely minded. Uh, so regarding tra change and, and transformation, what would it be your, your personal or your, your business attitude as well? Uh, and, and sort of if you can encourage people sort of not to be afraid of change or what would be your way that you would like to for everybody to, to accept change, even though it might be sort of out of their comfort zone? What could be something to make mm. them more more able to to accept it and to see sort of the the silver lining in it? Yeah, no, uh, I think you have to have the courage. Mm. Uh, the courage. Yes. Finnish call it sisu. Yes, you it's need a... to have courage. <laughs> this is something we have been working with our clients as well a lot. Uh, courage mm -hmm. uh, within organizations. So. Uh, you need to experiment. You need to be allowed to be to experiment, and uh, so courage yes. and courage to experiment. Let's yes. keep that. And how do you help your clients to be open to experimentation and find that courage? Yes, we we do challenge our clients, which uh, most of the time they appreciate, mm -hmm. and uh, they challenge us back, uh, which we appreciate because without 
challenge, uh, you actually don't develop. And mm. uh, this is the best way to develop, is to challenge mm -hmm. yourself and the ones uh, you're working with mm. in a positive way. Great. So challenge and experimentation. I keep that. That's a great a way to close this live podcast. And that leads us very well, actually, because I would like you to challenge my next guest here on the Event Success Insights uh, podcast. I will have next week uh, Ina Pirjetalahti, the head of inspiration uh, and CEO of Pink Helsinki. Uh, so what would it be your challenging question, Jonas, for Ina Pirjeta? Yes, hi, Ina Pirjeta. Uh, we met in uh, the last uh, live event awards, I believe, in Finland. So we were both uh, finalists there. Uh -huh. And uh, that's when I first, I think, uh, got to know who you are and what you're doing. Uh, I know you're into influencer marketing, relations marketing, and uh, this is something that uh, I'm not working with uh, uh, very much, I would say. But my question to you would be uh, thinking what has just happened in the COVID times. First of all, how did it affect uh, the influ influencer marketing? Uh, because I, got a sense that uh, it became more affordable uh, to use uh, influencers uh, in an online setting. Uh, so that leads to my second question that, uh, how could we be better at uh, utilizing influencer marketing in uh, business to business events? Because I think it's, this is not very present there, but I think it's possible. Right. So, Ina Pirieta, you heard Jonas's question. Next time you'll be sitting where Jonas is sitting now and you'll be taking that question and opening it up. I would like to, at this point, thank all the um, listeners who've been tuning in and listening to the Event Success Insights podcast. This live uh, video recording will be shared later on as well. And uh, our next appointment is next Wednesday at 12 with Ina Pirieta. Before I thank Jonas, so thank you very much uh, for attending here for your unique insights. I would like to give you presents I have already there next to you. I cannot reach them now and my colleague Jonas is not here today. So here we have a cup. So please. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I uh, helped myself. Yes. Uh, so I will open this. Yes, open this. Yes. And so um, I given to my guest this uh, Luti Event Success Insights uh, mug. So you have Event Success Insights community and everybody out there, please find us on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook Event Success uh, community and join the community. I'll put all the videos as well uh, and other great content. Then you have there to your uh, left this notebook with Luti uh, and a pen. Yeah. <laughs> and then next to you is... is um, uh, a blouse there on the chair. Ooh, Could you grab yeah. it? Uh, oh yeah, it fits. You you. Uh, it doesn't have oh, a hood. This oh, one. Yeah. So so it's, yeah, yeah. It's the same color you're wearing today. Similar. similar. So have it yes. there. So we will have actually a challenge with all the podcast guests. Uh, the challenge would be who wore it best. So I have given you now all my guests some Luthi branded uh, hoodies and blouses uh, and sweaters. So uh, you have to wear it somewhere, let's say in an upcoming event, and send me a picture. Oh, I'll, I'll take the challenge. So I, all right. I, I love challenges. So, uh... Experimentation. I'll, I'll that, so. <laughs> great. Yeah. So find a great event and wear that hoodie. You can wear it for as long as you like, but snap a picture and uh, send it back to me and I'll share it with the audience and we'll see who wore it best and tell us a little bit about your event. So it's a nice way to promote your events as well. Great. Jonas, big thank you. Tack så mycket. Tack så mycket, Krisa. It was a pleasure to be here, an honor and a pleasure to take part of this. Pleasure and an honor was all mine. And uh, we will close this podcast here. And we're going to have lunch with Jonas and talk a little bit more. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Event Success Inside. that was it. And next time, uh, 12 o'clock next Wednesday. Bye from us.